And finally, once we carefully copy the uh, formula or set up the formula correctly, like the starting note of a reverse link is actually the ending note of the same link, isn't it? And then, of course, the ending note of the reverse link is the starting note of that same link. So once we have done that, we just copy and paste, right? And everything will be correct. Okay. So this is on the description of the link, definition of the link, and then the cost of the link. Good. And it's important to set up in a systematic manner so that now when we count uh, the total in, inward links, all right? So the decision variable will be the xij. For example, this uh, cell here will be x12. Um, this cell here will be x35. Okay, and so on and so forth. Quite easy to understand. And of, of course, similarly, this cell here will be x53. So what we want to do is to say that for a node like 3, the total in is we can eyeball it and you know do the summation of the yellow cells whenever uh, the end node is 3. A cell like this, C, uh, C here, right, is a link which ends in 3 and therefore it goes into 3 and we should have the summation here. So it, it is possible but very cumbersome. That means it's not scalable. If we have 100 cities with 500 links, we'll be in quite a bit of a trouble and we are not even sure if we have entered it correctly. By using sum if, we can very comfortably all right, say or tell Excel to sum the range, sum the range from E5 to E31 like this. That means this, uh, this purple uh, surrounded yellow box. All right, sum all these. For those cases in C5 to C11, that is this bluish uh, box here, uh, whenever each of the cell is equal to H9, which is 3. Now, when the end node is equal to 3, that means that link, that C, uh, this link here for that row, must be coming into 3, right? And if Excel solver were to temporarily set this to 1, then it will be counted in the in for node 3, which is correct. Which is correct. See that? Yeah. So, we can then very comfortably know by looking at the boxes. Yes, correct. You sum at the right column from the right starting row to the right ending row. All correct. You are checking the end node. End node means coming into the node. That's correct. Yeah. And you are checking it against three because we are at node three. And that's right. So once we ascertain ourselves that these are correctly set up, the rest of the actual picking of which yellow cell to add uh, it's all up to Excel's formula. And because Excel does it very efficiently, there is no uh, lag whatsoever. There's no waste of calculation times whatsoever. Okay. So likewise for the outgoing. For the outgoing, it's similarly using the intelligent sum, right? The sum if checks if the starting node of the link is equal to node 3. Okay. So we don't hard code the 3 here. We, we put the H9 so that we can copy the formula across all the nodes. And whenever it is equal to 3, such as this 3, 5, which means that, uh, yes, it's a link going out from node 3, right? And we should add that value that is set by Excel Solver. So if Excel Solver momentarily sets it to 1, that will be included in the link. So all the outgoing nodes will be 3, 5, 3, 4, and 3, 6. So if they are 0, 0, 0, then the sum will be 0. Right? And the in better be zero because in must be equal to out, which means that uh, Excel Solver cannot send us through CT3 because we never came out from CT3. So whatever it is, we know that using sum if is the right way to go. Now, one more thing, some of you might be thinking, but you're using if, you know, if is such a uh, non-linear term, isn't it? And uh, would that be going to, would that cause problem because it's non-linear? Now, uh, it is a good thought, and non-linearity in Excel, at least, is not from the static expression of use of certain function. 
for example, but we know if it's nonlinear. Yes, it's true uh, in general. But in this case, we are not going to change the starting node definition. All right. And we are just basically adding or not adding uh, the value, which is binary, which is either 0 or 1. So to the extent that we are just adding and not adding, it is basically a, a sort of a binary decision variable summation. So the behavior is not more different from any other binary decision variable. So that is okay, right? So don't get bogged down by the fact that we use this sum if which appears as if it's nonlinear. Uh, it's quite acceptable to solve. Now, the net part is basically implementing the out minus in, right? Out minus in. And out minus in must represent the net, uh, how should we put it? The net amount of a uh, number of copies of you in that node, right? So, or rather you can use in minus out or out minus in. So, uh, for the case of starting node, the, we insist that the net must be equal to one. Does it sound right? Because we define it as in, uh, sorry, uh, out minus in. All right, you can easily define it as in minus out. That's fine, net, all right? And we just reverse the, the, the sign here. But in this present definition, using out minus in as the net number of copies of us in node one, that the starting node, then because we insist that we move out from node one, so in the context of node one, the out, which is one, minus the in, nobody comes in, right? No copy of you come into one. You just, you just appeared there. Uh, so we insist that that must be a one to force us, to force the optimal solution to bring us out of city one. Now, finally, also for the destination node, likewise, once we reach node six, we are not going out further. No more out for us. Now, of course, in real, in real life, we, we don't have to stay there. We can still go out. But for this problem, the, the solution ends when we reach node six. So we're not going out. So out will be zero, in will be one. We must come into six. So we already know the difference. We already know the difference has to be negative one. So we insist that the net has to be negative one. Okay, so that's the setup. Now, this sounds too complicated to be true, right? That uh, we will be able to find a solution. But let's just uh, dive in, fill up solver, all right, and find the solution. Now, uh, we should probably also add uh, the definition that these variables are binary. We can do that, uh, but we haven't done that because here uh, it's either one copy of you going in or not going in. And so Excel will never split you up Okay, into, into fractions. 20% of you go out from this link, 20% of you go out from that link. So uh, we, are, we are safe. But just in case, just in case that uh, you have equal costs and Excel wanted to actually, fi actually find that, hey, I can split you because it's equal costs, right? So just in case that uh, that some some weird combination of coefficients end up splitting us into five different parts to be shipped out to achieve the lowest cost, right? So just in case, we insist that all the variables have to be binary. Okay, strange, right? We actually found a solution, and what is the solution? It's a bunch of zeros and ones. To, to be or not to be, right? To go on that link or not. So we start at node 1. We should go from 1 to 3. Yeah? 3 to 4. 4 to 5. And finally, 5 to 6. Notice how well linked they are. There's no such thing as 1 to 3, then suddenly 2 to 5. Out of nowhere, right? So because if we end up at 3 and we never go out from 3, the in equals to out constraint will not be satisfied and then that solution cannot be the entire vector cannot be feasible notice that so we are safe so long as we have the total in equals to total out constraint so on the map if we go back to our slide we'll find that it is actually making sense a feasible solution should make sense to us in real life and we go from one to three three to four four to five five to six Kind of surprising because the obvious links like going directly from one to six 
will take 180, whereas the optimal solution is way better, all right, way better, 30 pounds or $30 lesser than the obvious solution. And we can try, of course, by, by moving from, uh, let's say, 1 to 5 to 6, you know, that would be 160, not bad. Uh, 150 would be better, right? So uh, in a more complex settings with uh, 100 cities and 500 links, it would be quite unimaginable for us to manually find out the optimal solution, right? So uh, mistakes will pop up everywhere. And even if we do very careful uh, uh, administration of all the numbers and calculations, it will take us very, very long. Whereas it will be much faster if we just expand this standard setup template uh, include 100 cities and 500 links. No, no issue, just copy and paste in Excel, isn't it? Yeah, so just define the cost, define the, the starting ending node of the links. That's it, finish. One solver, click, and we are done. So that is the power of uh, applying linear programming uh, models because uh, Excel is, you know, very economically uh, available and we can set up solver easily we understand linear programming right away and now with further ability to uh, pattern recognize certain standardized problems like shortest route like assignment like transportation problem we now have expanded our ability to as much as possible take a proactive approach to apply modeling on our business situation and thereby availing ourselves to optimal solutions like these uh, sometimes optimal solutions may after considerations may not be our eventual desired decision maybe because on that day uh, there were safe distancing measures being announced and we can't travel on one of the links for example right and uh, that's okay at least we know that we have this consultant who is always uh, very, very wise, always giving us the best solution possible, right? And then we can consider uh, taking that solution uh, for implementation, right? So this is really definitely very, very helpful to make our business, our daily lives, our, our lives our, uh, that we live much, much more optimized than otherwise. So with that, we have come to the end of our discussion of linear programming for this segment.